right, so I just gave the brain lecture. If you want to see the other, I think I gave almost the exact same in my pre-calculus 2 class and calculus 1 class, and I recorded all that. So if you want an instant replay, you can go watch those videos from today. All right, I'm going to get to math. Everything looks OK. Ooh, there is one more thing I want to talk about with your brain. And what could cause the curve to go like that? So instead of keep going up, what could cause your curve to go like that? What's that? Yes, so personal tragedy, personal hardship. Um, let's see, brain damage. <laughs> Hopefully won't be happening. Um, Taking a break. That's what I was what I was going for. So let's say you decide to take two weeks off for whatever reason, and you stop coming to class, stop doing your homework. What do you think happens to all the uh, hard work that you did to get out of the blue zone? Probably some of it's going to go back down. So this is one of the worst things. Now what happens over spring break? This. What happens over summer break? This. Uh, so unfortunately, it's going to happen. You want to try to minimize it, hopefully. <coughs> All right, polar coordinates. Where did we see polar coordinates before? A long time ago. Pre calc 2. You may have seen them at other places too, but for sure I can say you saw them in pre calc. Too. So do a really fast. Oh, it's a bad R. It looks closer to a pi. So if we are in rectangular coordinates, we would go over x, up, y. Of course, x negative, we would be going left, y is negative, going down, etc., etc. But polar coordinates, we're going to measure this point with an r and a theta. So this should be really familiar, somewhat familiar at least. So this p for point will be r comma theta. In terms of notation, you want to be careful because rectangular coordinates have parentheses, number, comma, number, parentheses. So rectangular coordinates look exactly the same when you write them down. Of course, it also looks like an open interval. So you have to know what you're dealing with at that moment. Generally, we're going to be using radians. So we're going to generally have pi over here. But I can't always guarantee that. But 99% chance if the second coordinate has a pi in it, you're probably in polar coordinates. That being said, I could absolutely graph rectangular coordinate where you go over pi and up 2. And that point will be pi comma 2. So I could have put a pi in a point that's not in polar coordinates. Generally, that won't happen, but um, oh, what graph has lots of those? Any sine cosine graph is going to have points, x coordinates of pi's and other multiples of pi's. So there are some, quite a few times that you could have rectangular coordinates with pi's in them. So it's just one of those things you have to know what coordinates you're using and then use them properly. So our equations, we have x equals r cos theta, and y equals r sine theta. These are the two basic uh, ways to they're the two basic equations to convert polar to rectangular, and vice versa. Uh, what are the other? There's two other equations we used to relate x y. How about how do I relate x and y to r? Forget about theta. Without any, um, you're 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 close. Uh, so, so, well, I want to relate x, y, and r. No thetas, so no trig functions of theta. Yeah, so we got Pythagorean: x squared plus y squared equals one squared. Or just one. We also have y over x is tangent. 
don't think we use this last one very often. Um, so I'll just write not common right here. So occasionally you might need to use it, but you're not going to use it that much. Just know it's there. So I'll do a quick example. Find all pol polar coordinates for two comma Now, <clears throat> I'm going to write rec for right there for this is a rectangular point. So I'm going to write rec to uh, denote this is a rectangular point. So remembering way, way back to pre-calculus 2, I know that was a year ago, approximately, or more, depending on who you are. What was the first thing we, do, we did to convert polar coordinates, to convert two polars from rectangular? Plot it. So that was useful. We're going to go ahead and plot it. So go two to the right. And now, uh oh, two square root three. So you could type it into a calculator and get an approximation. But what I'm going to do is square root three is between one and two. I think it's 1.71, but let's just say it's one and a half approximately. So we'll just go down close to three. Uh, it'll be a little more than three. So let's go, we'll say that it's three and four. So we'll put our point right between the two. So there is our rectangular coordinate right there, a rectangular point. So any questions on, oh, this should be negative. Any questions on this graph right here before we get our polar coordinates from this? All right, go ahead right now and get the polar coordinates. And let's use the theta that I labeled, so use a negative theta instead of going the scenic route, the long way around, the positive way. So go ahead and get, we need r and a theta. r is super easy to get. Just be careful, make sure when you square negatives, it's positive. Negative squared is not negative. Questions on any of this? So
So at this point, you should know I avoid arithmetic by using algebra with numbers. So that's what I did in the square root. I mean, I could definitely multiply and add to 16. I don't have that many fingers and toes, but just in general, I try to use algebra as much as I can. OK, so we know our theta, and we know our radius. <coughs> so there's our polar coordinate. I wrote a little P-O-L, uh, stand for polar, right there. You don't have to, but it's just nice sometimes to know rectangular with the little rec and polar with the pole. So it's easy to know which is which. All right, now I did put the word all, find all the polar coordinates for that. Who has another name for P in polar coordinates? Put no restrictions on r and theta. You can pick any r and theta, positive, negative, as big as you want, as negative as you want. All right, how about 4, comma, 5, pi over 3? What's the difference between negative pi over 3 and positive 5 pi over 3? 2 pi. That is exactly correct. They're one rotation away. So if I went the scenic route, the standard positive way, that would be 5 pi over 3. All right, what is another name for P? Yep, 11 pi over 3. And how do we get there? Add 2 pi. So that's the extra rotation. So how many rotations can I add? As many integer rotations as I want. Can't add a half rotation. That would put me face the wrong way. But I can add as many uh, 2 pi as I want. So we could encapsulate all of them. That infamous 2 pi k, because that is however many full rotations that you want. So you see 2 pi k show up a whole lot in pre-calculus class. Question? Can you add a pi and do a negative 4? Yes. And we're about to look at that in a second. Absolutely. <coughs> now we have to say what k is for any k in the integers. Or if we go, generally I say keep your radius positive. Uh, when in doubt, don't use a negative radius. But we're just going to write every single way we can possibly write this single point. So I could add a half a rotation to our original, and we'll point the wrong way. So we could point the wrong way, and that will be 2 pi over 3. So negative pi plus pi, negative pi over 3 plus pi is 2 pi over 3. So that'll point us the wrong way. But we'll go negative 4 that direction. So we'll walk backwards the wrong way. And just like before, we can add as many 2 pi's to it as we want, as long as it's an integer. All right, there is every single way to write that point in polar coordinates. Polar equations and graphs. Oh, one more thing I forgot to tell you about your brain. When you take your midterm, I'm going to know if you're in the red, the blue, or the black zone. Trust me. It's very obvious if you're in the red zone, because I see a bunch of junk where your answer should have been. And so I know if you're in the red zone, believe me. If you're in the red zone of too many problems, I'm not looking at any of you in particular for any particular reason at this moment, but if you're in the red zone, I will know by the time your midterm or your quiz hits. If you're in the blue zone, I would say red zone is probably F. 
right there. Blue zone, somewhere D to, I don't know, B minus or so, and then like B to A somewhere, that'll be black zone generally. So I will know what zone you're in on each problem that I ask you overall. So will not, you will not be able to hide. The only way you, I would not know you're in the red zone is if I happen to not ask that question on a quiz or a midterm. But believe me, if you're in the red zone for a few topics, there's a really good chance I'm going to ask some questions on those problems. Uh, I've been doing this, like I said, since last millennium. I know uh, how to ask questions that cover lots of topics. So there's very few topics that I miss when I ask qu between quizzes and midterms. There's very few topics I don't cover. And I think those few topics I usually tell you, this won't be on any quiz or midterm. And everything else, you have to know. All right, polar equations and graphs. So let's do some easy ones. So we also did this in pre-calculus 2 class. So on a graph, r equals a, and a is a constant number and positive. So r equals a, some positive number. If you really don't like using letters for constants, you can just pretend like it's, I don't know, 5 or something, and then just change a graph at the end to, instead of be a 5, go back to a. Actually, 9 is really close to a. So you just give it a longer foot or something, and pretend it's a 9. All right, r equals a. So I could convert to rectangular coordinates and graph that way. That was the way, uh, one of the ways that we graphed in pre-calculus class. What we're going to do instead is graph right here in polar coordinates. So r is always the same number a. What does this say about theta? Or does it not say anything about theta? doesn't say anything about theta. So theta could be anything. So it could be 0, could be a positive number, could be a negative number, could be any number. So our radius is always the same. So if theta is 0, we'll get this point over here, which is go over a, whatever number a is. Um, if theta is pi over 2, we'll be up here. The radius is still, r is still a. And in between, what happens as theta increases, radius needs to stay always the number a. So we're going to trace out. This is going to trace out a circle right here. So I think it's a protractor. Is that thing with the spike on one side, a pencil on the other? That you could compass. Compass. Yeah. It's a compass. So just think this is like a compass where you're putting the spiky part into the origin, and then you're rotating the pencil around the edge right there. So whatever a is is the distance between the spike and the pencil. All right, so we had a circle. So that's pretty easy to graph. We're doing ones intentionally easy. Uh, if you did want to convert this, the best way to do it, square both sides, r squared equals a squared, and then use your uh, x squared plus y squared somewhere. X oh, wow. What's wrong with x squared plus y squared equals 1? What does that assume? R is yeah, r's not always wrong. I mean, it is if you're on a unit circle, but this one needs to be an r. And it should be not just r, but it should be r squared, not 1. All right, if r equals 1, yeah, it will be x squared plus y squared equals 1. But you can't just assume that it's 1. All right, so what r squared was x squared plus y squared equals a squared. And I think I said my y's look like 4's sometimes. And hopefully yours don't. It almost looks like a 7, but you know my 7's are European like that. So it doesn't look like my 7's. It might look like your 7's. Only because you're writing them the wrong way. 
But <laughs> if your 7 looks like this, I would say your 7 looks like a 1. All right, there we go. x squared plus y squared equals a squared. That is the rectangular equation for a circle centered at the origin, 0, 0, with the radius a. So that is our uh, rectangular equation for that circle. So we're going to graph the uh, next one. And I'll pick an actual number for theta. Uh, let's do pi over 3. All right, this is a separate problem. This has nothing to do with the previous problem. So this problem says nothing about the radius. So what that means, radius could be anything. Could be 0, could be positive, could be negative. So there's no restriction on the radius. So let's think about theta is pi over 3. We're measuring in uh, polar coordinates. So pi over 3 So if I just draw the angle pi over 3, that's how it will look. Right up there in quadrant 1, pretty close to pi over 2. If your radius is 0, r equals 0, you're going to be at the origin. And what happens if r starts to grow positive? You're going to trace this ray right here. And there's no upper bound on r, so it keeps going. r could also be negative. We didn't write anything about r. So if r is negative, it's going to go that direction. So what this is is a line through the origin with a slope. Now it's tempting to say the slope is pi over 3. But we have a little problem. Is pi over 3 a uh, rise over run? Does it go up pi and over 3? Nope. Probably not. Maybe. But probably not. Pi is pretty close to 3, so that would have a that would be pretty close to 45 degrees if that was. Um, it would actually be pretty close when we, when we get to the slope. Um, if, we write if we get some decimals with our fancy calculators, we could probably see how close it is. So it's not too far off from being pi over 3 slope, but we will figure out the slope. Can you turn this into an x plus b form? Easy question. What's b? Zero. Zero. So that was geometry. You answered that with geometry. How in the world do we figure out slope? If you use point slope. So we could use our like point slope or slope intercept if we know. So I think point slope if we know two points. Is that right? So I probably could carefully figure out another point. If I wanted to, using some trig, I know one point. What point is obvious? Zero zero. zero, zero. So I got that point. But getting the next point, I think, will be no easier than what I'm about to do. All right. So how do we convert to rectangular coordinates? Use these formulas, y over x equals tan theta. All I know is theta, so I can't use anything that has an r in it. I nothing, know nothing about r. could be positive or negative anything. So we're going to use y over x equals tan theta. So we know y over x equals tan theta. The only thing we know is theta. So we're going to just take the pi over 3. What is tangent pi over 3? Got root three in it, and I think that's all. Just positive root three. We probably did, yeah. So it's pretty easy to get it in point slope form. Y equals square root three x. So the slope is actually square root three. So how close is square root three to pi over three? You can type in your calculator. It's probably not that far off de uh, using uh, decimal notation. They're both between 1 and 2, for sure. 